Welcome to my Cree SA-19 series teardown and review. This is the third generation of the Cree LED bulb. I had the first generation with its flaking silicon coating. The second generation, the four flow with the all plastic envelope. Nice flow through ventilation. In the third generation now, the SA-19, they've done away with any external cooling at all. All heat dissipation is right here on the body. And we'll talk about that more as we get into it. Hope you enjoy. I'm going to do a brightness range test on just a standard incandescent lamp dimmer. Behind the lamp, I've got my light sensor set up. Right now, you can see at full brightness, reading 2740 lux. That's full brightness. And here we go, I'm going to dim it down. By the way, all the other lights in the room are off. I've got the camera on auto iris this time, so it can keep up and be able to see the meter. There's two Lux. One Lux. And off just one out. Now restarting it, if I come up from all the way down, slowly increase the dimmer. It takes a lot to overcome the off state. A lot of hysteresis. I'm bringing it up very slowly. It comes on at about 1900 lux. Back up to full again. 2740-2750 Here's our example of the 4-flow Again, 5000 Kelvin 60 watt equivalent I've got it dimmed quite a bit down But it's very easy to tell in these bulbs exactly where the light source is And this is an example of the original Cree LED bulb. This one happens to be a 2700 Kelvin, 60 watt equivalent. And they were always very easy to see where the light source was in them as well. It's a center band. You call it the LED tower. The top of the bulb was always dark. In this next little test, I'm just going to put my flashlight which is probably around 500 lumens against the bulb trying to find a shadow of anything inside. There's nothing. Whether in the camera or in person, there is no shadow of anything inside. The light dispersion is just incredible on this bulb. Cree has also addressed some of the major problems with their original series. The base contact is no longer soldered. And the wire for the shell, the screw contact, is also soldered now instead of just being crimped inside between the plastic and the metal, which was the big failure point on the original series. After a while, this plastic, when it would get hot, 
would relax. It wouldn't hold the pressure against the metal shell any longer. And the crimp connection, and you can see I soldered this one, crimp connection would fail. This one here I'll also solder. I repaired a lot of these bulbs because I had a lot of them. This bulb has been operating for probably 20 minutes in a semi-enclosed fixture. I pulled it out, put it in here, and it's pretty much stabilized. 159 degrees Fahrenheit which is about 70 degrees Celsius well I discovered something new when I assumed that this base was metal it is not it's plastic and just like the old bulbs you heat up this metal screw base enough, it'll pull right off. But be warned, it's a one-time job. I've unsoldered the wire. And the center contact does have a wire crimped into it and soldered to the circuit board, which we'll see next. Yes, it will come apart. Not easily. But with that carefully applied heat, and then a pair of gloves, this thing is still hot. It comes apart. And you can see the optical design. These perimeter or peripheral LEDs not only shine up through the globe, but they've got this reflector ring to reflect back out through the side. And in the very center, see a two-pin contact. The optical reflector, the shroud, this ring of plastic, comes off quite easily. Now we'll try for the LED board. Careful not to break off the LEDs, I suppose. Oh, that bends quite easily. Soft aluminum, it's not an eel. And there it is. Next step, I think that heat sink still needs to come out of that base. Here's the board. Large filter capacitor. One oh five C, good stuff. Manufacturer A I S H I. 
开始。100 volt, 100 microfarad. It's quite a bit lower voltage than they've been before. Bridge rectifier, fuse, controller chip. Lion noise filter, assumedly. Switching transistor, transformer, couple capacitors. And if you're wondering, the large cap is directly connected across the LED pins. 14 LED packages. Every one of them is in series. We have a capacitor rated at 100 volts. Most likely, these packages are dual die, not like the previous generations where they had four die per package. That would give us 28 series connected die. We have 3.1 volts per LED. It's 86.8 volts total. Comfortably within the 100 volt capacitor ratings. It appears as though the plastic has been molded onto the aluminum cup. And look down the bottom, you can see evidence of that. In there. So the plastic must be a special high thermal conductivity to get that much heat soaked through it. And it's probably very thin as well, just using the aluminum for strength. Interesting design, Cree. So there we have it. The world's first, as far as I know, Cree SA19 teardown on YouTube. I think it's my favorite Cree so far, but honestly, it just hit the store today. I picked up some four packs at Home Depot. 